All right, so just remember, yeah, the homework due today that uh, property review is one of the problems this thing. It's available in Moodle too if you're not here, if you're looking online. That's due today, okay. All right, um, now let's have a look at this one. Um, I've got a couple blocks here. The hatching indicates where they're attached to the a surface. So the one on the left is attached to the floor. One on the right is attached to a wall. Um, which one is shear and which one is axial? Why doesn't everybody just start by labeling those? Which, which is which? Um, the deal is, as I was mentioning, there's just a lot of this stuff, a lot of different letters and variables and all that. I just want to be sure everyone has it kind of straight here. So here's kind of a little review of what we've been going over, just to be sure everyone's kind of good on this, okay? So, so label one of them shear and the other one's axial or normal. You could use whichever word you like. They, they're pretty much interchangeable, all right? So, so we're doing all right with that. The one on the left is axial because we're stretching that out like a spring like an accordion or something like that you might say you, you good with that that's axial what's going on there that word comes from the fact that the load acts along the axis of the i guess the fancy word for that is a structural member okay so the load is acts right along the axis of the member that's the idea um, the other one is shear <coughs> okay so what shear does is act uh, kind of parallel to that axis. So the axial load acts right along the main axis of the member. That's the idea. All right. Okay, now a key thing here to help you work through this is this statement here. This is about the best way I can kind of summarize it. Okay, the area on these problems is always what is attached. So by being attached, I mean being attached to a surface, a reference plane of some sort. The side then, the length, is the third dimension. It's normal to the area. Okay. So the length is the side that is not attached. So for each of those blocks, um, shade in the area and then label the length. And then show what they would look like after those loads were applied. Okay. So, so I'm just... Let's kind of visualize this. Let's be sure we, we see it. You know, what, what's happening to these blocks when you apply those loads? So shade in the area, label the length, and then show what they do. What, what kind of shape would they go into after the loads are applied? That's, that's what I'm after on this. Next slide. Kind of shade in what's attached to the floor and to the wall. Shade that in and then just label the other dimension as the length. And then just sketch in what these blocks would do after the load's applied. They're going to deform. Assume they're made out of something that deforms a lot, so that way you can sketch it in a bit, okay?
Got something there shaded in and stretched and all that. Doing all right with that. All right. Okay, so something like that. The one on the left, the bottom surface is attached to the floor. The length is the other dimension, and it's going to stretch up. The one on the right, the area is attached to the wall. The length is the horizontal dimension, the one that isn't in the area. And then it kind of slides up. Each plane slides a little bit with respect to the one next to it. So if you look at this one in 2D, it would look something like that. Okay. Each plane slides a little bit. Think of those planes as being planes of atoms, basically. Okay. And actually, I got that drawn in the wrong spot, don't I? It actually should be. It's over. The, it's the one on the right is what it is. So this one here. So each each plane just slides a little bit with respect to the one previous. Okay. Kind of like that. We're doing all right with that. Okay. And that's, I think, key to, to figuring this stuff out. It's just having these pictures in your mind when you look at how these things deform. Um, so we got any question on, on that, what, what we're doing there? The area is what's attached to a surface. The length, then, is the one dimension that is not included in the area. So between the area and the length, you get all three dimensions covered. That's kind of the idea, all right? Good. All right, so let's do the one on the left. Let's calculate the area and the length. What are they? We just want to get it straight, what's, what's what on this stuff, okay? So there's the area and the length, then we want to find the stress next. centimeters I think so 0.3 by 0.2 so that's 0.06 0.3 alright so the stress ought to be a pretty basic calculation right this force over area I just want to kind of, you know, none of these things are really difficult to couch or anything. You know, it's just, you know, just know what they are and, and put them together. That, that, that's what we're doing, okay? Yeah. 
So I got 13.3 megapascals for the stress. Load over area. Find the strain X. You got some material properties too that should help you find the strain. Okay, so the strain. How are you going to get to the strain? What do you got to get to it? You got the modulus, right? You got the stress in the modulus, so you can back your way into the strain. Okay. And then once you got the strain, find uh, how much that thing's going to deform. Okay. There's the strain point zero 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 six six seven, something like that. Is that right? And then once you got the strain, you can apply delta. So delta is the amount that thing lengthens by is what delta is. Pull up on it, it's going to get a little longer, and that's what we're finding is, is what delta is. See, all we got to know to find delta is the shape of the object and the and the modulus. Then we can work our way and figure out how much it'll lengthen by. Okay. Calculation. Mm -hmm. Are you dividing megapascals over meters per square? Um, yeah, I I could have done a little better with that notation. Um, Thirteen point three three. Yeah, megapascals is ten to the six. If I did it that way, then we could just kind of see how that goes unit list, and you got ten to the six divided by ten to the nine. Okay. Is that okay? Up with, uh... Yeah, the point zero zero zero. So you're going to take, oh, okay. you know. Uh, I, that notation I got a little sloppy with it using megapascals. Should have put a ten to the six in there. Okay. Doing all right with that. And then to get delta, you've got the strain, which is a proportional lengthening. Lengthening. You just multiply the strain by the length, and that gets you how much delta there is. Is that, that all right? So I just like to identify the area and the length first, you know, get those figured out. Then it's just running the numbers after that. Okay. So we're doing all right with all that. So point zero 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 two six seven meters, something like that. Let me get through it. And that's that lengthening that I show on the top of the sketch. So, so we all right with that? Any questions on that business? All right. 
So uh, why don't we do the same drill for the one on the right? It, it'll be shear this time. Same same thing, but same set of calcs. It's just different definitions for area and length and a different modulus too. This time you don't use E, the modulus elasticity, you use the shear modulus. Okay, that's what you want to use the next time through. All right. So you want to find the area and the length and get the stress and then use the modulus and get the strain and then get the delta. Megapascal for the stress. You get the strain and get the modulus. Just be sure you're using the proper modulus to get the strain. So 0.000 0.000975 for the strain. And that by the length gives you the delta. So this is a little bit of a template on how to walk through this. And just just connecting these different things you've been working with together is what I want to do. Okay. These are the basic properties that we'll use in the class. So I just want to be sure that we we, we understand them. Strain is a unit, right? Right. Yeah. Strain is like a proportion. Yeah. So yeah, strain is unitless. It's just a proportion. Is all it is. The the delta to the length is what that is. So point zero 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 two eight one for delta. So this is all right. Um, Thank you. 
All right, and then the other thing on this is uh, finding uh, Poisson's ratio, I think, or yeah, Poisson's ratio. Um, that's just using formula number nine. Okay. So if you ever only have two material properties and you want to find the third, you can use that formula number nine and solve for the third. So it'd just be a matter of plugging in E and G and solving for nu. Nu is that curvy looking D thing. That's, that's called nu. And that's Poisson's ratio. That's Remember, that's the ratio between the lateral and the axial strains is what that is. So, so we good with this? We got any questions on any of that? Looks like we're all right. Okay. okay. So Poisson's ratio, you just run that formula. It takes a little rearranging, but you get you can get to Poisson's ratio using that formula. Um, for metals, Poisson's ratio is between uh, 0.2 and 0.4 normally. We're doing all right. Okay. Now, um, so if we're good with that, um, there's some, that's kind of the real basic uh, properties that we've covered here so far in this first week or so. Um, now the next little run at this, we'll just use get a little bit uh, more complicated properties or stuff like that. So so let's, let's have a look at that. We all got that. So, all right. So the next it's the next page there we can start to look at. And see, it's real common if you apply a load to something to want to know how much of the length is. So there's a formula that just combines everything together and you create a formula. And so this would simplify the process we just went through. So this is page 210. 210. All right, and so what we do, we just take the three things basically that we just looked at and then combine them is what we do. So what we have here is that um, epsilon, the strain, and keep that straight from E, okay? Epsilon is a Greek letter. It's a backwards three. It means strain. That's delta over L. So delta is epsilon times L. So if you've got the strain, you multiply it by the original length, you'll get the delta. We've got E, which is the modulus, okay? That's the stress over the strain, sigma over epsilon. So when you solve for the strain, it's the stress sigma divided by E, the modulus. And then we've also got the basic definition of stress, and what that is, is uh, P over A, the load over the area. So if we take those relationships and combine the three on the bottom, we get to one formula that will tell us what delta is for a given load. Okay, so delta is epsilon times the length, but what epsilon is is sigma over E. So delta is sigma L over E, and what sigma is is P over A. So P over A times L over E is P L over A E which is delta. So that's the shortcut formula to get delta. So if you've got the, the shape of the material, you can get L, or the, the object you're looking at, you can get L and A, like we, what we just did. You know, of course, if you have the load, you just plug that in there. And then if you know the material properties, you got E. Okay, easy enough. Now, um, sometimes things can vary a little bit with length. So you could also integrate that if you needed. Now, normally you don't, but if you have some sort of load that varies with a length, like the weight of something might vary with the length. If the shape is in a standard cross-sectional area, that might vary with the length, you could integrate. Normally speaking, it's not very common to have to do that, but you could if you needed to. So the basic takeaway here is that delta is PL over AE. And that's a common strength materials formula. I've got that on your formula sheet if you need it. Okay. And it's uh, formula number seven. Okay. 
And you'll see that in books all the time. It's used quite a bit. So if we go back and look at what we were just doing there, see, we could have just done it that way had I had you known about this. See, instead of having to hook all those relationships together, you could just plug in PL over AE and gotten from the load and this block and E to delta would be easy enough, okay? And that's normally how, how you do it. You just use that formula. It's, it's a very well-known formula. Now, the deal with this is you can use it for shear also, but you've got to be careful with it. If you use it for shear, and, and see, it isn't listed for shear because shear deformation is not quite as commonly needed as normal stress deformation is. So if you use it for shear deformation, the P turns into a V, and the E, very importantly, turns into a G. It's not the modulus elasticity when you're doing shear, it's the shear modulus, okay? So, so you want to keep that straight if you're going to do this for shear. All right. So if you're going to do it for shear, um, there we go. You got delta is PL over AE, which is the common formula, the one you'll find in textbooks and formula sheets. For shear, you'd have to change it into VL over AG. Okay. Now, that's not on my formula sheet. It's not on any formula sheet I've ever seen. But, but if you ever need to do a shear deformation, that's the quick way to do it. The one thing there just... Remember to turn E into G. E is for axial stress. G is for shear. So just remember to, to make that substitution if you, if you want to do it that way. Okay. So we're doing all right with that? Okay. All right, so the main formula there is delta is PL over AE. Now we can combine some things we've been working on here um, to, to do some stuff with this. So let's say we've got this pier here, some sort of uh, post, and we've got different loads we're applying, and I'm showing them there at A and B. Let's figure out how much point A would move with respect to the base down there at C, all right? So the first thing I want to do here is find the reaction at the base. I've got the dimensions over there on the left. I want to find the deflection of point A. Deflection is a, one of those D words, uh, deflection, delta, deformation. They all kind of mean the same thing, how much something would move. So I'm assuming that C is a, a solid floor. It's not going anywhere. So delta A is what I want to find. How much will A deform or move or, or whatever, deflect? I also calculated the areas there as well. So I want to start off with the reaction at the base because whenever I'm going to do this strength stuff, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside and find the internal forces. I want to know what the external forces are first, all of them. So I want to find that reaction. So I got 0.6 up and I got 1.2 and 1.2. That's 2.4 down, right? So based on that, I should be able to find that reaction. About 1.8 meganewtons up. Okay. So given that, uh, why don't you find the internal forces? What's the force in AB and what's the force in BC? Because what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply PL over AE. I got the length easy enough. I got E of the materials given. I've got A calculated there for you. So you just need to find P, the load. So what's the load in AB and the load in BC? Why don't you get those figured out? Let's cut out a nice simple three-body diagram and get those figured out. We want the internal forces. That's normally how we do that. So we're going to
happening. So just draw free body diagrams, cut where you want to find the force, take one entire side or the other entire side, and then just do, a, just do an equilibrium equation and solve for that internal force. Now, you know, this is kind of important stuff for strengths, okay, to be able to do this. It's fairly straight up, but it's important to be able to do. And I'll just to translate, from my perspective, important for you to be able to do means it is important. I want you to learn it. From your perspective, important for you to be able to do probably means it will be on the midterm. Okay, that's <laughs> usually what that means. So, so just, you know, get this out of the way so you know how to do this, okay? It's, it's, it's just a big part of what we're doing here. So we want to find those internal forces. So we're getting those all right. I usually use a C for uh, compression and a T for tension, although C is also negative because it shortens things up. T is positive and it lengthens things. So we tend to use those, those signs, okay? So positive for tension, negative for compression. Doing all right with that. So 600,000 tension for AB and 1,800,000 compression for BC. Are we okay with that? You got any, any questions on that stuff? So what I'm doing there, I've got that full, I've got the reaction, so I can just cut through between A and B and use the top section and see if one. Uh, on the top there, we're pulling up with 600,000, so AB pulls down to hold equilibrium, and that's tension. That's the internal force, it's tensile. And then the one on the right, I've got, I just used the lower half, so you're, I'm just cutting through the area where I want to find the stress, or the force, right there. Take the lower section there, and take the one whole side or the other whole side. Okay? You don't just take a piece out, you take the entire side of the object. So for BC, I took the lower side, I got that reaction pushing up, so I know the internal force pushes down. That's compressive, 1,800,000. Okay. So we're doing all right with that. And once you've got that, then it's just a matter of applying this formula, but you do it in, in parts. You do it first from... Um, B to C, or C to B, actually, because we're kind of starting at the floor and working our way up. So what I would do then is I just made a chart, you know, A, B, and B, C, then I got a, a row for P, L, A, and E, and then I got a last row to combine everything, and I just plug everything in. And what I'm getting then is the deformation of each section of that post. Okay. And I've just got this all set up so I can find PL over AE. And that's how that's being done. Okay. So it's just a matter of filling in everything, then just running PL over AE. So for AB, I got 600,000. I got the units there on the left. 0.7 meters, 0 0.001257 meters squared. That's the area that I found up above there. And 22 times 10 to the 9, which is E. 
And then for BC, I've got negative 1,800,000. For the load, 1.6, which is the length, 0 0.003848, which is the area, and 22 times 10 to the 9, which is E. And then I just run the numbers. And what I'm getting then is delta for each piece. I got AB on the left. That'll be the delta for it. It's going to lengthen out a little bit because it's tension. And then BC is going to shorten up a little bit because it's compression. Okay. So I just plug in everything, and then I get the deltas. So AB is going to lengthen out by 0.0152 meters, so one and a half centimeters, basically longer. BC is going to shorten up by because it's compression, so that negative sign on the load works its way through. It's like I forgot to put that in here, didn't I? There's a negative right there. So that's negative 0.034 meters. Okay. So the net delta of point A will be the combination of these things. Because if you apply those loads and you kind of start at C and work your way out, point B is going to drop by 0.034. But relative to B, A is going to lengthen out by 0.0152. So to get the net delta A, you add that stuff together. Okay. We're doing all right with that. So when you add up everything, you get negative 0.0188. So that here there is going to get 1.88 centimeters shorter. So it's going to happen after those loads are applied. It's, it's common to have you know one structural member that has multiple loads applied so you might have to run through a process like this to get that deformation figured out okay. all right so um, on Wednesday, that'll be the 10th, I think. I'll add one more, so that'll be 152. I think I've already assigned 143 and 141. And one, 132. Yeah, thank you. So these are the four that are due on Wednesday. Okay. So that's the new one right there. All right. What's that? Yeah, that worksheet. If you haven't turned it in yet, you can turn it in tomorrow. It'll be okay. You could. Yeah. Okay. All right.